Hello, folks. Welcome to another round of modern. We have Josh Potacek playing Rakdos Rock versus Zindi the Stoodle, the Stoodle playing Esper Reanimator. Both of these decks are pretty cool. Uh, we've had oh, the microphone arm is fighting me. Uh, we have had uh, Reanimator on the channel before, and I actually did. Uh, Josh was on another round that I recorded audio for today, so I think that should have posted earlier in the week if I remember how I do the posting schedule correctly. But uh, we'll see. Alright, so Josh leading on Den of the Bugbear into Ragavan the Nimb Nimble Pilferer. Cindy is going to Concealed Courtyard, Evoke Grief, Ephemerate Grief. Hey, so we're going to be taking some cards from Josh's hand. Alright, so there's Bolt, Terminate. Ops to take the Bolt. I feel like you just take both removal spells. I don't know what the other card Cindy took was. Alright, Ragman's gonna attack in. This is one of those trades that, like, if Ragman hits, uh, Josh can make the treasure, use Terminate then to kill the Grief. Yeah. Or Dreadbore. No, that was Terminate. And I think. Again, I, I forget what the first one, first card you took was. Ooh, OG Polluted Delta, that's so nice. And a pretty fatal push, too. And the fancy ephemerates? Is that looking nice? My version of 3 reanimator does not look nearly as nice. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna fetch out here. Let's see what we find. Coffee is much better than the last cup I had. I'll take it. <laughs> I accept this. Alright. Fetching out a watery grave here. I love that reanim the reanimator deck is a thing in modern. Like, it's just, it's so cool. I love all the pieces to it. Persist is a nice card. Like, I remember when the Persist got revealed. I was going for a jog. I remember, like, frantically texting uh, my coworkers. I was like, yo, wait, we can play Reanimator in Modern. This is going to be so cool. What do we reanimate? And then they revealed Archon. We were like, ah, this is what we reanimate. This is small things in life, you know? Cindy looking like she's getting stuck on two lands here, but there is a Faithful Mending in her hand. She has a Mole Drifter as well. The card that Jun can just never beat. Both pe both players stuck on two lands, just passing back and forth to each other. I'm a little surprised that Cindy hasn't used Faithful Mending. But yeah, there's the Marsh Flats. Has a Prismatic Ending in hand. Solitude. Uh, that might have been the only card for or pitch card for Solitude. That makes sense. I'm gonna try and dash a monkey. Right, pitching solitude, pitching prismatic ending. Just going to exile the Ragavan. It's going to ephemerate the solitude. Ephemerate is such a wild card, dude. Josh is going to, oh, okay, Evoke Fury, pitching, oh, I think Season Pyromancer was that card. Alright, he's going to fetch, if it's going to uh, fizzle. I think, she's, I think we're just going to shortcut that part. <laughs> Using the very nice Eucalyptus Sleeves. I'm a big fan of the mint colored sleeves. Big, big fan. <laughs> oh, Lord. Alright, so. Cindy's so going to untap. Let's see what we got here. I want to see this Mole Drifter come down. I love Mole Drifter. It's just. It's a dumb card, but I love it. This pot of greed on the stick, you know? 
There's so much draw passing. <laughs> Alright, it's a faithful mending. We're gonna draw two, discard two. So he's gonna go to 18. Discards mending and solitude. Okay. Draw for turn. I want to see evoke Moldrifter and then ephemerate the Moldrifter. That's all I want. Yep. Alright, Josh is going to fetch. Play Inquisition of Kozilek. Okay. Oh, he had no black mana. That's a mountain. I don't know why. I kept thinking it was a swamp. Prismatic ending, Mole Drifter, Persist, Archon. Well, you definitely take the Persist. I feel like you still have other choice. <laughs> I, you know how many permanents Prismatic ending doesn't matter right now. Also, because you can't take the other two cards, but. Alright, draw. Looks like second Archon is what she just drew. But she can flash back Faithful Mending. Draw two, discard two. It's so good. Okay, there's a Tenacious Underdog. If you don't know what it does, it is a 3 2 for 2 mana uh, that has the Blitz mechanic on it. And it can be blitzed from the graveyard, which is pretty cool. Ooh, we do Ephemerate. Drop double Archon. Untap. Draw. Just draw another Ephemerate. No, okay, she draws back. Mole Drifter Ephemerate. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, draw two. Ephemerate, draw two more. Yes. John can never beat that play. <laughs> Sid just drew four cards. And we'll get to draw two more in her upkeep if the Muldrifter survives. I will forever love the meme that Jun cannot beat Moldrifter. Right. Trades the Moldrifter into the underdog. I'm only a little sad. <laughs> I wanted the Moldrifter to go all the way. I wanted to draw six cards. Good God. Cindy's hand is stacked. Ephemerate. <sighs> Priest of Foul Rights, a Mark Grave. So I think, I guess the play then is draw for turn, play Glacial Fortress, unearth the Priest, activate, bring back Archon. Draws another Archon for turn. At this rate, Sydney's just gonna hard cast Archons. I think she loses some form of life for that, but I don't know how much. Three? Maybe? I think I, I definitely played Priest of Rights in my version of the deck. I don't think I ever managed to unearth it. It's either unbearable rights or find the persist, but Archon of Cruelty has hit the board. She has a 6-6 six -six that does a lot of things. Card 
Alright, we're going to Dreadbore the Archon. She draw another Archon for turn. Tell you what is rough, folks. Have you ever had an Archon ephemerated against you? It feels awful. Or like when you go to like remove it and it gets ephemerated, it feels so bad. You're like, ah, damn it, I'm dead. They're like, yeah, yeah, you are. You're like, thanks, I know. Exact verbatim conversation every time. Oh, yeah, you're right. Alright. We're going to tap two men. We're going to unmark Grave here. I imagine we're dumping a burial rights. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I wonder if people are still playing the four color version of Reanimator. I know there was one. It was a five color. No, they didn't play green, right? No, I don't think there was a reason to play green. I wonder what happened to that deck. Alright, here's the season pyro coming down, discarding two non land cards. Gonna draw two, make two elementals. I don't know if it matters. I don't think it does. Got my new expert markers. This thing, that is faint. Wow. Alright, tap Bloodcrypt go. I just want to see Hardcast Archon. <laughs> is that too much to ask for? It's like 8 mana, isn't it? How, how big is Archon? Actually, I think I have an Archon right here. Let's unzip the binder. <laughs> Our kind of cruelty is, in fact, eight mana. Right, Archon has come back down. It's one of those things that, like, once Archon gets to attack, the game's just over. Right? Like, I can't imagine Josh can come back from the Archon Swing. Though, he does play Terminator's Dreadboard, he could find just keep finding removal for it. Okay. Alright, attacking in. City debating if she wants to block. I feel like you don't need to block this attack. You take three, what happens? I mean, I guess if she doesn't block it, takes the damage, and then Josh blows up the Archon, it feels kind of rough. But. It blocks the Pyromancer. Alright, goes to Kogan's command, target. Modes are... It looks like he's picking up a creature. Probably picking up Left Fury, actually. Does he do two damage to the Archon, or does he make Cindy discard a card? Make Cindy discard a card, which happens to be Archon of Cruelty. <laughs> Tries to Fury. 
Cindy's just gonna ephemerate the Archon. And yeah, it's gonna be game one going to Cindy. I think there's, there's just no beating at that point. Alright, folks, we'll be right back with game two in just a second. Okay, and we are back with game two. We're gonna have Josh on the play here. Uh, it was pre-game effects of double ley line of the void. Not where you want to be as the uh, graveyard player. You're not th things you don't want to see as the graveyard player. That sucks. It's four mana, so it's harder to prismatic ending. I wonder if Cindy plays an off color triumph to try and get to that fourth color. Uh, looks like. I'm a glasses off. Is it Inquisition or Thoughtseize? Oh no. And this is why we don't do commentary without our glasses on. No. Uh, okay, it's Inquisition. You can tell by the the book frame. Or the Mystical Archive spell chapter book frame. Not a fan of the man. It's the English ones. The Japanese cards, like, the arts look insane. I just don't like the, the art. The art on a lot of the English ones is good, too. I just don't like the frame. I don't know. Oh, pre-game effects. The Leyline Cycle is so interesting, man. Because, like, I'm not going to lie to you. I forgot. I said I accidentally punched my desk. Jesus Christ. What is wrong with me? Um, I, I kind of forget they exist all the time. Like, I'll, I'll be playing in Legacy. And I'll see, like, I'll sit next to somebody and be like, all right, cool, pre-game effect, like, Leyline of the Void, or like in modern, I've seen a couple people like, lately be like Leyline of Sanctity, and it's like, oh, those are, that's a thing. I forgot about that. Those exist. <laughs> I own those cards. They are somewhere, but I own them. Sure. Right, Priest of Felrate's coming down. It's gonna pass. Hopefully, uh, I guess we're on the plan of Priest Beatdown, but something tells me Josh is gonna find a creature. Or a removal spell before <laughs> before the priest connects ten times. Cracking in for two. Just gonna go eighteen. I wonder if there's like an argument. <coughs> Sorry, I wonder if there's an argument uh, as the like Gregor deck player to just like concede to the ley lines if you don't have an answer to them, or if there's like a double ley line, because then you can just start game three on the play with extra time. But uh, I don't know. I I will say so. I've noticed a lot of Magic players have a different uh, viewpoint. It seems on concession and like regards to like yeah in regards to concession as opposed to like other card games that i've played uh other games a lot of people will concede to save time and magic players for the most part will like try and make you play it out and win out which is like my whole rant about the four color deck right like whatever my rant it's not a rant about the four color deck it's really a rant about the people playing against the four color deck uh, we're gonna terminate the priest is that like so for example with the four color deck a lot of people will play against money pile or yorian blink and not recognize that they've lost the game uh because honestly like at a certain point in like in the game the money the money pile players already won you're just kind of like waiting for them to kill you but you just take the so much time in game one like waiting for that to happen that's why, like, so many games go to time, and then you see so many weird money pile records because they have, like, one win. They, like, win one game, then draw game two. Uh, I feel like it might be a similar situation here that, like, say you're playing, like, I don't know, Dredge. It, Dredge might be a bit more extreme of an example than Reanimator is. But if you're playing Dredge... And your opponent opens a double A line. I don't think there's a way you beat that. So like you just probably concede and go to game two, go to game three. Now like Cindy has access to Deferry Time Raveler. Um, she could play Time Raveler, bounce one of the ley lines, 
there's still a second one that she has to deal with, and then Josh can always recast the ley lines because we're far enough in the game. Uh, I guess if Josh never finds a clock, you could try and find enough lands to cast Archon. But I don't know if that's good enough. Or well, I won't say it's not good. Enough, not good enough. I mean, casting or having Archon resolve is is good enough usually. But it's a lot of time. I mean, eight mana in modern, unless you're playing Titan or Tron, is kind of just a rough a rough thing to ask for. I'm going to attack it into the Time Raveler here. Just please land for turn. Pretty sure he just, at this point, slams the Ley Line back down. Yeah. Are there any other black, white, or blue cards that answer ley line? Teferi bounces it. Uh, Prismatic Ending can hit it if you have the fourth color in your deck. Now, everything I'm thinking of is like green. Like, how's it say, like Foundation Breaker? Uh, Knight of Autumn kills it, but I don't think there's anything in blue, white, or blue, white, or black that answers it permanently like that. Which is a shame. I don't even think the four color version can. It's red. Yeah. I mean, like theoretically, there's Terastodon, but you have to or not Terastodon. No, yeah, Terastodon, but you have to. You still have to reanimate that. You're not casting it. Ooh, there is Omnixilus of the adversary coming down. Brand spanking new uh, planeswalker from the streets of New Cabana. There's a lot of dumb jokes you can make about that one. Um. This card is interesting. I don't know how good it is. So, Josh was testing it. We had somebody else who was playing it in the Arachnos deck. Uh, and they actually played each other in a different round, which should be on YouTube by this point. But... Uh, Nixos is interesting. Like, it's such a powerhouse card in Standard, I would say. I don't know if it's good enough in Modern. I, I want to say it is. And I, I'm very, very okay with being wrong about it. Like, I'm currently testing it in Grixis Death Shadow. Uh, but I don't know. I do live to see... I, I, I long to see the day that somebody stacks a Murktide region to it, though. And it's immediately minus seven target my opponent. I'll kill you. That is the type of shenanigans that I want to see. Um. I don't know, a lot of people are comparing it to Oko power level. I, I admittedly <coughs> I admittedly didn't get to play with Oko uh, very much before it got eradicated from every format. And I don't I don't see the Oko comparison. I definitely think the card is good, don't get me wrong. I just I don't know. I think Death Shadow. <clears throat> I think Grixis Death Shadow is probably the place that like that utilizes it the best, but I could I could be wrong. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna move him down. Feed another devil. Opting to make another 1-1. One, one. And then opting the other copy to draw a card. Or not draw a card. Uh, make Cindy discard a card to take damage. So the opposite discard the Ephemerate. She has 6 mana. She could theoretically go runner or <laughs> land, land Archon and just like win the game. All right. 
right, Cindy's going to pick it up, and we'll be going to Game 3, folks, in just a second. And we are back with Game 3, folks. The maths are a little crooked, uh, but we, we have a pregame effect with Leyla and the Void again, which is mighty unfortunate. Here's a Marsh Let's Go. It's one of those things that, like, for coverage, I would like, you know, I would like actual games. <laughs> Leyla is so good. I'm really trying. I'm, I'm still trying to think if there's like a one, like a one or two minute answer in black and white. I feel like there's something like very, very obvious that I'm just missing. Disenchant. Can you play disenchant? It's about one on a white. I don't know. I'm still. Ah oh man, I'm still trying to think of like what you can do. It's rough. It's like such a rough spot to be in because I feel like all the like all of the primary ways to pop ley line is in green because I know Dredge plays a good chunk of them like uh, the flashback one not that you can flash or ancient grudge that's the card I think you can cast it from your hand but and like theoretically in Dredge like you can start casting your, your creatures right like Cindy can't really do that. <laughs> Her only, like, realistically, her only creature she can, like, realistically cast is Priest of Felrites. Muldrifter's five mana. I mean, you can still, like, evoke stuff and then ephemerate it and just try and do, like, a medium impression of the Blink deck. But I don't know how much I love that. Uh, does the four... I'm trying to... I'm really trying to remember what the four-color list looks like. I know they played, uh... The Wandering Mind, is that the, the, the three drop was called? They played Expressive Iteration. I can't remember if they played Fury. I don't. It's, I don't remember. But all right, so Ragman's connected. We've got a treasure. I feel like Ragman's is also like a nightmare to deal with now. If you just keep dashing it in, uh, Cindy is Fatal Push. I guess it's not a nightmare. I said in the last video that we had Josh on, but his tattoo looks insane. It's really cool looking. The more like he put his arm pops up, the more you get to see it. Alright, Cindy's gonna play a flooded ooh, OG flooded strand too. Alright, dashing monkey out again. Oh, no. Hmm? <laughs> There's a dash ragaban. He's gonna take two, trigger. Reveal Faithful Mending. Probably not a card that Josh really wants to cast here. But it's not, like, the worst idea. Trying to filter some cards. Unless he has a land drop. If he has a land drop, then it's fine. I wonder if he plays Kroxa. I guess not, right? He plays it underdog instead. I don't know. There's his land drop for turn. He's gonna fetch. Grab some basic swamp. There's a Lily on the Veil coming down. Uptick. Now, I don't like Lily on the Veil. I, I I think of, like, historically... Oh, wow. All right. I've said it probably in every video that we've... we've <laughs> that Lily has been cast in. That I'm just not a fan of the card. I don't think it does enough. I think in this, from, like... I don't know. I think in this specific game right here, she might do a lot but i still don't think it's that good because like you're also discarding cards i don't know if i would leave in liliana the veil against reanimator because like what happens if you don't hit your ley line you're not going to uptick like <laughs> they could just put the uh like oh cool here's my archon i'll reanimate it now i don't know i don't know if josh plays her in the main board if he does i think that'd be the first thing i'd cut But 
again, in situations like this where you have Leyline on the board against Reanimator. Okay, still gets first my event. <laughs> Lily out of sucks, man. <laughs> I, just, I'm, I'm, I gave it a little bit of credit. We're taking it back. That card sucks. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to get attacked by a Jun player. Casts the Tenacious Underdog, bounces it back. <laughs> we don't have any like, prolific Jun players at the shop. If we did, I'm pretty sure they would just like fight me on site. I forgot who I was talking to. I was talking, it's irrelevant to the commentary, but we were talking about Bloodbird Elf, and I was like, I've never cast a Bloodbird Elf in my life, and I never want to. Shardless Agent, though. Big fan. Alright, so Josh has Ragavan in hand still. Looks like he has a Dread Boar. And I can't tell what the third card is. Oh, is it another Tenacious Underdog? I feel like you just, just dash out the Ragavan. Oh, that's some Nixilis. Okay. Interesting. Sacks the Underdog. I think I would have gone to combat first. I mean, if you're playing around Fatal Push, sure. Actually, if you're playing around Solitude, it's probably better to cast the Nixilis first. Alright, Cindy draws for turn. Picks up Archon as Fatal Push. Going to push the Devil, and so that'll deal damage to Cindy. Unfortunately, I don't think there's much coming back from here. Minus two, make a devil. Going to down tick of Nixilis, make another devil. Going to up tick the other one. So he's just going to take eight, take two. I almost said take eight. I'm going to take two. He dash out the Ragavan. Attack for two more. I'm going to hit Faithful Mending. And picks it up. Alright, let's see what Cindy draws for turn. Draws the Persist, and unfortunately that's going to be game three. Alright, folks. Josh is going to take a two to one with Rakdos Rock over Esper Reanimator. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.